Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be going over how you can use Facebook to log in and register users into your Expo app. The technologies that we'll be using for the video today are going to be Golang, PostgreSQL, React Native, and Expo. So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned for the rest of the video and let's get started in building this thing out. So the first thing to do is go to developers.facebook.com and go to my apps in the right corner here. If you don't get to this screen, you'll get a login prompt or something along those lines. So log in and then go here to create app. And for this, click consumer and click next. Type in a name for your app. I'm calling mine apartments clone. And then create your app. And we want to add Facebook login, so click set up here. And here under products, you will have Facebook login, so go to settings. And then go back to your Expo code or your React Native code and go to app.json. And here you will see a slug property. Copy this property. And then also go to your terminal and run expo who am I and here you'll get your expo username so here under valid OAuth redirect URIs type in HTTPS colon slash slash auth dot expo dot IO slash at your username for expo slash your your slug which mine was apartments dash clone and with that save your changes next we need to install expo auth session and expo random into our code paste this here and install those all right so with those installed go to your sign up screen and import everything as Facebook from expo-auth-session slash providers slash Facebook. And here we'll make use of a method from our Facebook import. And that will be the use auth request, which will take in an object which has a property of client ID. And from this, we want to get the third return value, which I will call Facebook prompt async. Now for this client ID, we need to go back to our app within developers.facebook.com and we need to copy our app ID here, then paste it in as the client ID. Next let's create a mutation for registering through Facebook. We'll call it Facebook register and we need to pass an asynchronous function here. We will await Facebook prompt async and we will get the response. Now if the response type is equal to success then we need to get the access token from the parameters of the response and then let's just log that to the console here so let's go to Facebook registering this uh, button here sign up with Facebook and say Facebook register dot mutate now let's go to our console here and in the app let's go to the create account screen and click sign up with Facebook yes okay we'll continue and here we get this access token so with this access token I'm gonna to go to postman and query the Facebook graph API and the endpoint for this is me, so it's going to be https colon slash slash graph dot facebook dot com slash me. And then for the query parameters, we'll have fields, and then we'll specify that we want to get the ID, name, and email. And then we need to pass in the access token, which we just got. So I'll paste that in there, and we'll send it off. And here we go. We get a unique ID back, a name and an email associated with that user. 
So with this access token, we'll send it to our server and then our server will make the request to Facebook and then we can check if the user is already registered with Facebook or some other means. And uh, if they aren't, then we can create an account for them. So let's get to that. So here I am in my server code. I'm gonna create a new function here called Facebook login or sign up. And it's going to take an iris context Now before we get started in building out this function, let's first define the data structures that we're going to be using within it. So down below we need to create a new structure. We're going to call it Facebook user input and this is what we're going to expect the user to pass into this function. Uh, the field is going to be called access token. It will be a string and it needs to be required. And the second data structure is going to be called Facebook user res. So after making a get request to the Facebook server, we are going to get a JSON object with these different properties. And those properties are ID, name, and email. So we will be using that to uh, create our user. So back in our function here, Facebook login or sign up, we need to create a user input variable and then read the input here and if there are any errors then we need to handle those errors and we'll be doing that by calling handle validation errors next we'll define our endpoint which is this graph.facebook.com and we will add in the passed in access token to the end and then we need to make a get request to this endpoint so we need to import http and then make a new request passing in the endpoint. And if there's an error while making that request, let's send to the user that we got an internal server error. And if that didn't happen, then that means that we did get a successful response. So we need to defer closing the body of the response. And then we need to read the body of the response. So we need to import IOUtil. Now, if there's an error, while reading the body, we're going to log it to our error logs. So import log here. And then we'll send to the user that we got an internal server error. And if we didn't get a body error, then we need to unmarshal the JSON into a data structure that looks like this. So we will do that here. We're going to call the variable Facebook body. And we need to import JSON and then just call unmarshal passing in body and then the address of Facebook body. Now, if the email from Facebook body is not equal to an empty string, then we will actually start to begin creating our user. And this could be either be registering the user or logging the user in. So first we'll check if the user exists. And if we get an error while checking this, we'll send to the user that we got an internal server error. And if no error occurred and user exists is equal to false, then we need to register the user. So we'll split the name to get the first name and then the last names. And we'll do that with uh, the split n function from strings. And then we'll create a new user passing in the first name, which will be index zero of name array, the last name, which will be index one, email, which will be facebookbody.email, social login is true, and then the social provider is Facebook. And then we will add that user to our database. And then we'll send the user their ID, first name, last name, and email in the form of a map. Now, if the user exists and their social login is Facebook, then we need to log the user in. And all we really need to do is just return a map of the user ID, first name, last name, and email, and then just return here. And if we get to this point, it means that the user already registered their account through some other means, which wasn't Facebook. So we need to state that the email was already registered. And we can go up to our register function and just copy this code. And we're gonna put it into a new function so that we can just make a function call. We'll go to our utils folder and go into errors. And we'll create a new function here called create email 
already registered and it will take context as well. And let's just return this. Get rid of the return statement here. And let's go back and in our register function, we can call that function that we just created. So we'll say utils.create email already registered, pass in context. And down here, we will do the same. So utils.create email already registered, and pass in context. And we'll return here. Now, with our Facebook login or sign up function created, let's go to main.go and register this endpoint. We'll say user.post Facebook and routes.facebook login or sign up. Now let's navigate back to our React Native code. And let's go to our constants file. And let's create a new endpoint called Facebook. And it will be user endpoint plus slash Facebook. Now let's go to our user service. And let's create a new function called Facebook login or register. It's going to take in an access token. We'll create a try catch block. And within the try block, we will make a post request to our Facebook endpoint, passing in the access token into the body. And from that, we will extract the data. And if data is not equal to undefined, we'll return the data. Otherwise, we will return null. And if we get an error, we will just call handle error and pass in the error. Now let's navigate back to sign up screen. And here where we're logging this access token to the console, let's call that function that we just created. So we'll say const user is equal to await Facebook login or register. And that just auto imported for me. And I'm gonna pass in access token. And if user exists, then we would like to log in the user and call navigation.go back. Now here where we're saying if native register dot is loading, then we'd like to return loading. Let's say or Facebook register dot is loading. And then we'll also return loading for there. All right, so with this change made, let's go back to our server and start it. We'll say go run main.go. So with our server up and running, let's navigate to our sign up screen. And let's click on sign up with Facebook. And here we just registered. You, you can see my first name and my email up at the top. Now let's sign out. And let's go add the same code over to our sign-in screen. So copy over the Facebook register mutation. And let's paste it over here. Change the name to Facebook login. Let's import Facebook login or register from services slash user. Let's go back to sign up screen and copy over this Facebook prompt async. We'll paste that over here. And then let's import everything as Facebook from expo-auth-session slash provider slash Facebook. Now here where it says if native login dot is loading, we'll say or Facebook login dot is loading. And then down here for our Facebook button, we will change the on press event. So it says Facebook login dot mutate. And let's navigate to our sign-in screen and continue with Facebook. And we just get logged in again. Let's sign out. So that's how you guys can log in and register users into your app using Facebook. I hope that you found this video useful and thank you for watching.